Welcome to Empress 101. This is Sila, and today I will show you the high ceiling build for new Empress after the mage buffs. It's a 2 4 2 evoke build that uses split magic circle tripod on evoke. So I named it Svoke to distinguish it from the original 2 2, four two build. This is part one of the guide, and I will be covering build, skills, gems, basic rotations, car usages, and tips. There's a very important tip at my secret tech without exaggeration at the end of the video so please don't skip and watch till the end let's get started build for 3x5 stage emperor is stronger and it's because empress 3 is not very efficient compared to empress 1 for 3x5 plus 1 you can sw swap out curse stall for kimba weapon in general curse stall is slightly higher damage but in certain gates and legion raids kimba weapon is better for the set, you choose Nightmare, Stats, Full Spec, and Crit. For Elixirs, Critical is better than Master, and Critical Damage is better than Additional Damage. I didn't do the math myself, but it has been overchecked and proof checked by many from the KR community. If you ever get a 9-7 stone and you want to build 3x5 plus 2, the only option is to go Adrenaline level 2. It's about 2% increase. If you get some other 97 stone and you want to build some other engraving level 2, it's not gold efficient. It's not worth a gold. You better just go Empress 1 and try to go for 100, 100 qualities. That's usually stronger. If you get um, some other engraving to level 2, it's usually less than 1% uh, damage increase. Some engraving being weaker, actually weaker than Empress 1 build. These are the skills you use for the Empress uh, Spoke build. Pause the video and use it. Runes are after all a preference, but I think this is the best for me and I've been sticking to this setting after testing out multiple settings. If you ever need extra stagger or extra stagger or purify rune, then swap rune on Serendipity. Now, gems. You need high level cooldown gems in order to play this build. Empress in general needs high level cooldown gems to play. With only event gems, you will not be doing a good damage. Luckily, Empress doesn't need that many damage gems, so if you're looking at the cost of the gems, it's not that expensive. Only 3 damage gems are important. These are the minimum gem requirements that I think you need to play this build. If you want to start upgrading your gems from here on, or from level 7s to level 9s, here's the gem upgrade priority. It's pretty straightforward, so I will not explain further. If you need this, pause the video and take a screenshot. Now let's get started with the rotations. With the mage buff patch on April 17th, you no, you no longer have to use scratch dealer 3 times and movement speed and attack speed buff last for 5 seconds instead of 4. Basically, you just want to repeat the cycle in the white box. Scratch layer 2 times, call destiny, ruin, edge, edge, ruin, and use evokes whenever your stacking skills are on cooldown. When it comes to the rune skills, there's a priority. Delsteel Steel Rain will be stronger than Secret Garden and then followed by full card, and then followed by Serendipity. However, with, if you have a call card, Serendipity will be higher value than Sacred Garden or full card. On Encounter, this will be your opener. Notice you use the evokes first, so that you can draw a card before your awakening hits. And if you see a good damage card, use it right away so that it applies to Deathbound and Rain. After using Secret Garden, use full cards without stacks to burn mana so that you can enter the balanced mana state. From there on, it's just repetition of the basic cycle. I'll quickly show you the opener for Empress.
Unlike other Empress builds, you stick to the normal rotation if you need to get a balance card. One thing you can do is you can, ca you can cast Scratch Dealer once instead of twice. However, if you ever get a balance card plus a snake card, there's multiple ways you can utilize these two cards. There's a very strong um, rotation or cycle if you get these two cards. However, there's so much to talk about and I will cover in detail in the guide part two. The cycle goes on like this. I'll briefly show you what the cycle using these two cards looked like. Let's go over the cards now. Arcana's DPS boosts come from cards and with a recent patch, the expected DPS gain from cards increased by a lot. And that's especially because the star card went from a F tier card to S tier card. So let's go over the cards one by one. Judgment card lets you spam red skills without having to stack, in, stack with blue skills for 4 seconds. This card has more value in balanced MP state because you can start your next cycle faster after you use your rune skills. It's best if you use judgment card with serendipity or 4 card. Below is the example rotation using a judgment card. So the most common way to use it is use it right after rain to spam out our rain skills together within the crit damage buff duration. Next is star card. Star card freezes your mana for 12 seconds. So it lets you stay in balance and be state without effort. You can just use it during cycle to maintain balance and be state, or sometimes it's better if you can use it during short cutscenes, mechs, or patterns where you cannot DPS. However, do not use it right before magic addiction state, because there's a mana recovery from the Empress engraving. If you use it when your mana is high and right before magic addiction state in the balanced mana state, um, it'll lock you in a magic addiction state with mana being 100%, and then your DPS will drop by a lot. If you get a star card plus a clown card, it's free 24 seconds of free balance and beast state. Next is moon card. Moon card reduces cooldown for all your skills, including a space bar and awakening. So if you use awakening in balance and beast state with moon card on, your awakening cooldown is almost halved. Most of the time, you can just send it, but try to maintain the buff longer. For example, don't use it right after you use all skills, use it before you start using skills again. Hull is a great damage card. Use it with many ruined skills possible. If you have full attack speed, you can fit in 3 ruined skills within the 4 second window. Serendipity and Deathbound only has about 45% crit chance, so it's better if you group these two skills with a cult card. It's usually best value if you use it with Celestial Rain and Serendipity. Corrosion card doesn't seem like a good card, but it's very high value for a single card. It's pretty much free 10% damage for 35 seconds. You can just send it when you see it, but try not to stack the buffs unless it's necessary. Royal fills up your card slot. It's a very high value card, because there are no bad cards anymore. Even if you get a star card, it's a DPS increase. So you have more chance of drawing S to A tier cards now. You can just send it when you see it, but try to draw two cards instead of one. Twisted Fade is a good damage card. It has possible damage increase of 0, 10, 20, and 40%, each being 25% chance. If you draw a 0% Twisted Fade, no text appears. If you draw 10% or 20%, white Twisted Fade text appears above your character. If you draw a 40% yellow Twisted Fade, then the yellow Twisted Fade appears, as you can see on the image top right. It's a DPS card, or a good damage card, so it's best if you use it with Duster Rain or Deathbound, just like if you would use a Cult card. 
Wheel, Wheel of Fortune resets the cooldown of any skill you use, including Awakening and Spacebar. Make sure you use the card before you use the skill, not after. Most of the time, you will be end up using the reset rain cooldown. And during burst, you can also use it to use Awakening two times. Clown card duplicates the last card you used, but it doesn't tell you which card it was, so it tests your memory. It's best if you can use it after cards like Judgment, Star, Call, or Twisted Pate to bring them back. You have to be careful with the order you use, use sometimes, because you don't want to bring back cards like Ghost or Mayhem, then you can bring back S to A tier cards. Balance card gives additional 1 stack to blue skills. Unlike other Empress builds like 440, Balance doesn't have good value alone on Smoke build. You can just maintain normal rotation unless you also have Snake card. Notice that you can get to 4 stacks with 2 Scratch Dealer hits. What you can also do is just use a first usage of Scratch Dealer and then Call of Destiny Rain instead of using 2 usages of Scratch Dealer, Call of Destiny Rain. Joy card decreases the remaining cooldown for all skills, meaning if you use it right after you use the skill, it's more valid than using it later. It can reduce the cooldown by either 15% or 30% with 50% chance each. It's a very difficult card and there are so many ways to use this card, but most of the time you will end up using it right after Celestial Rain or after Celestial Rain plus using Secret Garden. For advanced tricks on Joy Card, I will cover in more detail in Guide Part 2. Snake Card lets you stack with auto attacks, so when used with Balance Card, it's very strong but useless when used alone. It also generates 3 times more identity if you can hit all 3 auto attacks. And notice how it has 400% additional damage to monsters. It means it can kill mobs very fast, and summon object or a pet from a summoner, you can kill it faster. Mayhem and Ghost provide attack speed and movement speed, but they barely contribute to DP DPS, so send it when you see it. Also, when you get this card after you use a S or A tier card, don't send it right away so that when you get a clown card next, you can duplicate the good card first, then send these cards. Here's an example Atropin verse. You start off with Scratch Dealer, fed in Evokes, Awakening, Atropin Call so that Atropine and Call also applies to Evokes. Face Bar cancel the Awakening. And then Celestial Rain. If you have a Judgment, proceed with spamming other rune skills. This is a clip from my Theamine G2 run. I didn't have an Awakening and my 4 card only reset once, but I still did 1.9 billion within 5 seconds. Now, tips. The most important part. Number one, you can use Evoke, Joy, Evoke to reduce the Evoke cooldown by a few more seconds. You can try it and trust you on yourself. Number two, you can intentionally use skill in the air right before a balance MP state so that it burns more mana. Number three, avoid artists and summoner parties if you see them, politely ask them to switch their MP recovery tripods. To the right is a clip of Sunwell feeding mana right before you enter balance MP state. I still get PTSD from that day. Number 4. Do not spam Judgment Card plus Ruin skills in Magic Edition state to go to balance MP state. If you use all skills to enter the balance MP state, you cannot stay in balance MP state for long because when skills come back up, your mana will be high again. So be careful when you're spamming Judgment Cards in Magic Addiction state. I told you, Judgment Card is more value in Balanced MP State than Magic Addiction State. And lastly, the most important tip. Do not use Awakening at the end of Burst or when mana is low. Using the Awakening kicks you out of Balanced MP State. And unlike Emperor Arcana, it's very hard to go back to Balanced MP State after using your Awakening. So. Best timing for Awakening is at the beginning of Burst 
when you're, you're about to go from balance MP to magic addiction state. Simply put, try not to use awakening when your mana is low, try to use it when your mana is high. Now it's time to reveal my secret tech. When you play Empress, you constantly have to track your mana in your nightmare state. By using this setting, you will be able to see the buffs more easily. Additionally, on KR Client, we have an option to turn off Bracelet and Elixir buffs as well. These are not important, so I have them turned off. This is what it looks like when you apply the setting. Your current Nightmare state will be closest to the middle, so it will be easier to check both mana and state. It's also easier to keep track of remaining self crit buff duration, as it is right next to the Balance MP state icon. And to the left will be the cards, ordered by the most recent one, adding to the left. It's like a stack. That's it for today. I hope you enjoy my Empress 101 Smoke Build Guide Part 1. Please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. I will be making a separate Q&A video as well. I'll be working on more Thamine VODs and Part 2 advanced tips and tricks to boost your DPS. So if this video helped, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I wish you guys best luck on your card draws.